So if we understand that, then there's going to be three parts down the road. Hormones you must know. Blood sugar hormone. Insulin. Alright, so insulin, someone's a di is there a room diabetic or has a friend who's diabetic? Great, cool. So if you know someone who's diabetic, their pancreas doesn't make insulin. So here's what happens. When our body takes in something that's a, of a sugary nature, or has sugar in it, most, most everything does, uh, just in varying levels. When, they, when it takes in that blood sugar, when it's absorbed and it releases into the bloodstream, then it appears in the bloodstream. As the blood goes through the body, the pancreas senses that there is an increase in blood sugar. So it in turn releases insulin. Once the insulin is released, then the blood sugar can normalize. There's something called metabolic syndrome, which talks about insulin resistance. And that's where the blood sugar rises up in the body, goes through, hits the pancreas, the pancreas goes, mm, I'm not really interested in releasing some insulin right now. And then when it does, it releases the insulin, and then the insulin basically goes through and says to, and, and says to the muscles and the organs in the body, hey, there's some excess of blood sugar in the body. You need to absorb this. And the body goes, and the muscles and the organs, they go, eh, they're really interested. I'm kind of I'm busy playing PlayStation and Xbox over here. Okay, they don't really want to come help out. So then as a result, we end up in this state where we're constantly in a high state of blood sugar. This is very important. It's very important because when is my body stimulated to open up the fat cells and release them into energy that we can use, they really love to do that when I have a slightly lower than normal blood sugar. Because when, they, when, the, when the blood sugar drops down, the body goes, holy crap, I've got less blood sugar in here, I need to tap into my energy sources, I've already used some of, them, some, of them, some of the energy that's in the muscle, now I've got to go to the next level, which is the fat. But the fat is signaled to release by the blood sugar slightly dropping. So as a result, people with metabolic syndrome typically are overweight. So now, I've gotten a little bit deeper into that, but all I want you guys to understand is insulin is a key hormone, a key hormone in us being our optimal fat, or having the optimal amount of fat that we want. Appetite hormones, ghrelin, ghrelin and leptin. All right, if you remember any one thing I've talked about, it's actually the two things, but one, one of the things I want you to remember is leptin. Leptin is, has been called the obesity hormone, it's also been called the starvation hormone. Truth is that both are correct. Leptin is really our thermostat. When it's too hot or too cold, leptin increases or decreases. And this is the key part where willpower comes in. Because if I have leptin, that basically goes like, hey, I'm super low or super high, then we will receive signals that actually go to our brain that will say, hey, you need to eat or you need to back off. You know, I'm full. Ghrelin is a really interesting thing. If we don't eat for three or four hours, there's research that shows that our body releases a lot more ghrelin. ghrelin. Ghrelin kicks in and basically affects the frontal orbital cortex, which is a fancy way of saying the part of our brain which is very interested in pleasure-seeking things. Now, after three to four hours, what happens is something in our body, something in our body, goes, man, you know what? I need to eat. If we haven't eaten three or four hours, the ghrelin is the part that activates our brain which says, hey, you know what? You don't want that ham sandwich with salad and, uh, and all sorts of good stuff on it and, and in the, uh, in the, on the, uh, the sourdough sort of wheat bread. No, you want chocolate cake. You want the sweet thing. You want something that's going to give you just like massive rush. You want the pleasure seeking thing, the thing that you love. Okay, so leptin and ghrelin, two hormones that have been controlling the way most people eat. Now, what's interesting is, depending on how we eat, we can manipulate that leptin, manipulate that insulin. And that's, that's the key part of what we're going to talk about tonight. Alright, so, leptin regulates the hyperhandle mechanism, ghrelin emphasizes the attractiveness of food. John, John, look at you now, he's on the rhythm. So, insulin, uh, so we've talked about that, and 